Hello there! Recently I came across the question how to train graph neural networks in an unsupervised fashion. That means we have some unlabeled graphs and want to learn a representation of them independent of any task. There are different ways to do that and I will present a couple of approaches in this video. So I hope you enjoy it and let's get started. An initial question is why would we even want to learn without labels? How is this useful to us? One typical application is a transfer learning setup. That means we pre-train on a typically larger unlabeled dataset and then fine-tune on a smaller dataset for which we have labels. For graphs this happens quite often with chemistry and biology datasets where it's difficult or expensive to gather labeled data. The idea is therefore to show the model more data so that the performance hopefully improves on these so-called downstream tasks. One important note, it might not always make sense to pre-train graph representations. For example, this work analyzed some of the GNN pre-training approaches on molecular graphs. It came to the conclusion that no significant improvement could be found on downstream tasks. The paper also discusses some potential reasons for that in case you're interested. Another application is to do plain representation learning without having a labeled dataset. In the end, we just want to convert the graphs into embeddings here in order to use them for things like clustering, outlier detection and more. The important part is typically that similar graphs should have similar embeddings so that we have an ordered latent space like shown on this image. Now that we know why unsupervised GNN training can be useful, let's have a look at how this can be done. Typically, when we talk about unsupervised learning, things like k-mean clustering come immediately to our mind. These approaches, of course, also exist for graph data. For example, there is a k-means graph variant that partitions a graph into k clusters. Besides that, there are also other popular methods like node2vec or graph2vec that also do unsupervised graph representation learning. The main difference is that these methods typically don't incorporate node or edge features and with GNNs we can sometimes learn more powerful representations. Therefore, in this video I want to put the focus on unsupervised representation learning with GNNs. The predominant approach for unsupervised representation learning is to do self-supervised learning. The basic idea is to obtain the supervisory signals from the data itself. Typically this is done by predicting hidden parts of the input data. For images, one option is to remove random patches and make the model predict them. For text, it's quite similar, certain words are masked out and the model has to output these missing tokens. But those examples are just one way to perform self-supervised learning. There has been a lot of research on different methods how to generate supervisory signals from data. Eventually, we can of course also do the same thing with graphs, for example by removing edges or nodes and make the model predict the missing parts of the input. Now let's have a look at some of the variants of self-supervised learning on graphs. I had a look at several surveys on graph self-supervised learning and have linked them in the video description. My takeaway is that there are mostly three ways to perform representation learning without labels. Number one are autoencoder-like approaches based on reconstructing the input. For example, you can reconstruct the graph's adjacency matrix or also reconstruct parts of the node feature matrix. And we will look into an example in a second. Another thing I've seen a couple of times is to come up with multiple pre-calculated tasks based on the graph representation. This can be graph descriptors like node degrees, substructures, path length between nodes and many more. The task of the model is then to predict those descriptors as precisely as possible. Eventually this forces the model to learn a joint representation that contains all of these handcrafted features. Of course, if you plan to pre-train a model for downstream tasks, you could also directly use the descriptors as features, which makes these approaches sort of redundant in my opinion. A third category are contrastive approaches. This is a popular self-supervised framework that pushes the representations of similar data points together and pulls different data points apart from each other. Before we have a look at the first category, I wanted to point out that there are quite some differences between unsupervised node level and unsupervised graph level representation learning. For graph level embeddings, it's typically more important to differentiate from other graphs and therefore we mainly care about intergraph representations. 
For node level embeddings, which includes both node and edge information, we mostly care about the learned representations within one graph, so the intra-graph embeddings. In the following I won't distinguish between these different views, but you might encounter that some of the methods are designed for only one type. Let's begin with the reconstruction approach. The idea is simply to perform some sort of graph completion. I've picked out two popular ways to perform autoencoder-like representation learning. One is the graph autoencoder presented by Kipf and Welling in 2016. An input graph is embedded by two GNN layers into a per node latent representation C. The decoder is simply an inner product of the latent vectors, which predicts the adjacency matrix of the input graph. The idea behind this is that a good node representation should preserve the graph structure. This approach falls into the category of node level unsupervised learning. And the node embeddings are optimized in such a way that they are able to reconstruct the node connectivity of the input graph. The paper Strategies for Pre-training GNNs presented in 2019 introduces another reconstruction approach called attribute masking. Instead of reconstructing the adjacency matrix, it recovers the node feature matrix, or more precisely certain elements that have been masked out. This approach is again a node level representation learning technique, can however also be extended to graph level attributes. To mask out node features, you can simply replace a small part of the node embeddings with a vector of zeros and then compare the predicted vectors with the actual ones in the loss function. The model will learn the contextual information based on the surrounding nodes. So these were two approaches based on the reconstruction of information contained in the input graph. You will find many more approaches in the literature that go in a similar direction. Of course you can also try to reconstruct the whole graph, so all nodes and all edges. This is however a quite challenging task, which I've also experienced in my GNN project series. Let's move on to the next category. One thing you can do is to come up with a general graph descriptor, either on the node level or the whole graph, and make your model predict this pre-calculated number. For example, you can let the model predict the node degree or clustering coefficients. And then you use the mean squared error as a loss function. This forces the model to learn embeddings that preserve the descriptor's information. Of course, the choice of this descriptor can have significant impacts on the quality of the learned embeddings. That motivates a refined approach, which is to predict a large and diverse amount of these pre-calculated labels, a classical multitask pre-training. This makes the embeddings more general. For molecules, this can, for example, include all sorts of measurements that have been made in the lab or also molecular fingerprints. There's also a discussion about multitask pre-training in the paper strategies for pre-training GNNs in case you want to read more about these approaches. Now let's move on to the last category of unsupervised GNN training. The idea behind contrastive learning is to discriminate jointly sampled views from independently sampled views. One popular contrastive framework is called GraphCL and was published in 2020. For example, we use this unlabeled graph as inputs. Now we want to generate similar data points which should be embedded into similar vectors and also different data points that should lie far apart from each other. To create a positive pair, two views from the same instance are created through augmentation. There are plenty of graph augmentation techniques, let's have a look at a few of them. This input graph can for example be augmented by masking attributes, just like I've shown before. This operation sets parts of the entries in the node feature matrix to zero. Another option that was used in deep graph InfoMax is to randomly shuffle attributes such that the node feature information is destroyed. Besides augmenting the node feature information, it's of course also possible to play with the edges, for example by removing or adding them. There are plenty of other approaches, but I think you get the idea. Besides augmented positive pairs, it's also necessary to show the model negative examples. Negative pairs are obtained by negative sampling within the batch. These are simply two different graphs from the dataset. The task of the model is now to maximize the agreement between similar views. More mathematically, this corresponds to maximizing the mutual information, MI, between two embeddings. The GNN therefore works as some sort of discriminator that needs to decide if two graphs belong together or not. 
GraphCL uses the cosine similarity between two embeddings in the loss function and they show that this maximizes the lower bound on the mutual information. GraphCL contrasts the embedding on a graph level, but it can also be relevant to contrast on a node level or potentially both, which is done in another paper called Infograph. It was proposed in 2020 and motivated by a model called Deep Infomax from 2018. The idea of infograph is to contrast between the representation of entire graphs and the representation of substructures. More specifically, it contrasts all possible combinations of node and graph level embeddings within a batch. The model has the task to predict if a node embedding and the graph embedding originate from the same graph. There are many more contrastic frameworks for graphs, but the main idea is always similar. One important thing I want to point out here is that you need to be careful with the notion of similarity. Contrastive learning on graphs introduces an underlying prior, which is that graphs with slightly different structures still lead to similar representations. Intuitively, this makes sense, but it can be suboptimal in some scenarios, for example, for molecular graphs. Slightly changing their structure, let's say by adding an atom, might result in completely different behavior. Because of that, I think it's very important to think about how the graph representations should be aligned in the embedding space. So far, self-supervised learning on graphs still waits for its breakthroughs and couldn't achieve the same successes as in NLP or Vision from what I've seen so far. However, unsupervised graph training is required in many scenarios and I believe that we will see some more improvements in the future. Obviously, I couldn't cover all the relevant papers on unsupervised graph representation learning, but hope that this gave you a good introduction to the topic. Thanks for watching and I would be happy to see you soon in the next video.